Let's sketch the response to this differential equation using the damping ratio. The first thing that we need to determine is the damping ratio as well as the natural frequency and that's done most easily using the uh, standard form of the characteristic equation where we have 2 zeta omega n times s plus omega n squared. This tells us that omega n has to be equal to 2. Then we need 2 times zeta times 2 is equal to 1.6. So that tells us that zeta has to be 0.4. We then pick out which curve that is from our template here. And we need this shape for our plot. I'm going to draw my own axes where I'm just going to use the initial condition of 1, and I'm going to try to roughly sketch something that has the same shape as what's shown to the right. Now, we want to indicate the time base somehow, and one way to do that is, let's say we were to pick out the lowermost point on our first oscillation, and that occurs roughly around 3.5 over omega n. So if we picked out 3.5 over omega n, where omega n is equal to 2, then we have about 1.75, and I'm just going to label that. 1.75 is where uh, this first oscillation hits uh, its lowermost point. This uh, can also be labeled with a little bit of additional information. So anyone who understands what the damping ratio is, if you tell them what the damping ratio and the natural frequency are, you've given them all the information they need in order to understand what the response looks like. We can also sketch the response using the exponential envelope and the sinusoid, and we can use the uh, quadratic formula to find sigma and omega d, but I'm going to use a different method, which is what we call the completing the square form, which looks like this, s squared minus 2 sigma s plus sigma squared plus omega d squared. That has to match the same characteristic equation we have above. We, this yields sigma is equal to negative 0.8, and I don't have a calculator handy, but I can guess that the exponential envelope, which is negative 1 over sigma, is about 1.2. Similarly, we know that omega d squared then has to be equal to 4 minus our uh, sigma squared, which is uh, 0.64. So omega d has to be equal to square root of 3.36. Uh, without using a calculator, I'm just going to make a guess uh, that the square root is uh, roughly around uh, 1.8. From that, I can calculate the period of the sinusoid, which is just going to be 2 pi over omega d, which is going to be 2 pi over 1.8. Uh, that's roughly about 10% bigger than pi, so why don't we just call that roughly 3.4. So. Uh, with that information, I need to sketch uh, an exponential envelope, which I'll dr draw in both above and below so that it just barely makes contact with our uh, curve. And then I need to show what the time constant is, and let's pretend that this is about uh, 1.2, where we hit about 0.37 compared to our uh, peak value. I also want to show the period of the sinusoid, and that may be a little bit harder to show. I'm just going to pick out uh, the times uh, between zero crossings, and I'm just going to label that as about 3.4. So we've just added some additional information that uh, goes along with the damping ratio method here using the complex exponential and the sinusoid.